this example, we're going to look at how to use the idea of a system of inequalities, but with an application or a word problem. So the idea is going to be the same. We're going to use the inequalities that we're coming up with. We're going to graph those inequalities, see where the solutions are, and then we're going to kind of go from there. So if it says two manufacturing plants make the same kind of bicycle, the table that's there gives the hours of general labor for each plant, technical labor required for each plant, and then for the two plants combined, the manufacturer can afford to use up to 4,000 hours of general labor. So for the general labor, it's up to. So these hours can't go over 4,000. So they can come to 4,000, but not over. So that's going to be less than or equal to. And then it says up to, again, 1,500 hours for machine time. So again, less than or equal to 2,300 hours of technical labor. So again, less than or equal to 2,300 hours. And I'm just going to put variables here since it gives us x as the variable for plant A and y for the variable for plant B. 5x, 2y. Okay. So it says plant A earns a profit of $60 per bicycle in plant A. So we're going to say $60 for each bike in that plant. And then plant B earns a profit of $50. So 50Y for plant B. So we're trying to figure out how many bikes per week the manufacturer should make in each specific plant to maximize the profit. So what we're going to do, we're trying to find the profit so we don't have that value. We're going to make three inequalities based off of that little table that we just filled out and then the profit equation. So the profit equation is kind of what we're trying to figure out. But that's $60 for each bike at plant A plus $50 at plant B, and we're just going to say equals P for profit. And the inequalities are just what you guys came, or what we came up with in the chart over there. So 10x plus 1y is less than or equal to 4,000. 1x plus 3y is less than or equal to 1,500. And 5x plus 2y is less than or equal to 2,300. So this right here is what we're going to graph on our table or on our coordinate plane down below there. So um, you guys can graph this kind of however which way you want. You can find the intercepts and graph it that way. You can put it into slope intercept form, um, whichever way you're more comfortable with, but we need to somehow graph those three inequalities. So I'm going to go down here and simplify them so that they're in slope intercept form. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I've gone ahead and the inequalities that you guys see here are the same thing that's in that box there. I just simplified. So like the first one, I just x over. 
So y is now less than or equal to negative 10x plus 4,000. The second one, I subtracted the 1x over and then divided everything by 3. So 1 divided by 3 is a third. 1,500 divided by 3 is now 500. So I just rearranged those inequalities so that they have them in slope-intercept form. In all honesty, I think it probably would have been easier for this specific example to find your x-intercepts um, and then just plot those two points. But it's always good practice to put it into slope-intercept form. So let's go ahead and graph them. So the first one is going to start at 4,000. So obviously, if you guys are looking at your graph, 4,000 is not on our y axis as a y-intercept. So we do almost have to find the intercepts anyway. So if you were to find, I'm just going to do the work here on the graph, the intercepts. So say we're trying to find the x. Let's plug in 0 for y. I know it's an inequality, but it's the same idea as though it were an equation. So if we're trying to solve for x, we add that over to the other side and then divide both sides by 10. So x is less than or equal to, really equal to 400. So you can plot that x-intercept on your x-axis of 400. Now the slope, if it's the same line, it's going to have the same slope. So the slope is a negative slope of 10 over 1. So that would need to be going down. So we can't really go down to the right, so we're going to go up 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and over 1. I'm going to put a dot right there, 5 over a half. And it is equal to, so that's going to be a solid line. And it's less than, I'm going to shade a while. You guys can wait till you're done so you don't have a million things to look at here. So less than would be below. And then we're going to graph the second inequality. So the second inequality, we can graph that because the y-intercept is 500. And the slope is down 1 over 3. And it is equal to, so it too will be a solid line. And it is less than also, so we will shade below. And then we have the last one to do. So again, y-intercept is too large. 1150 is too large. Um, so if we try to solve, again, for this one, for the x-intercept, by plugging in 0 for y, we would add the 5 halves x over. And then what I would do is multiply both sides by 2 to get 5x is a less than or equal to 2300. And then 2300 divided by 5. And that is your x-intercept. So 460 is our x-intercept. Just put it as close to 460 as you guys can. 
Um, so 400, 450 would have to be in the middle, so maybe just the hair past the middle for 460. And again, the slope is still the same. So the slope is negative five halves, but we can't go down to the right, so we're going to go up and to the left. So up, one, two, three, four, five, over one, two. Two, three, four, five, over two. It two is a solid line. That one was really bad. It would probably help if I plotted my point correctly. So let's for over here. There we go. That's better. And it too is less than, so we will shade below again. So why I wanted you guys to kind of wait is because there's so much shading We only want the solution part that makes every single one of those equations or those inequalities true. So yes, there's a bunch of yellow, but the only area that is really the true solution for all three inequalities that we came up with is this part in here. So if you guys want to just shade that section, but that's all we're looking at is that part right there. So how do we determine the max profit? Well, the intersecting points, the boundary points along that gray section that we just shaded, because the lines are solid, every point on that boundary is a solution to all three inequalities. So it's saying that any of those points will make the solutions true, but we want the point or the value that's going to give us the highest number or highest profit for everything. So what we're going to look at is sort of the boundary or edge point of that shaded region. So what we're going to do is plug in each point. So what I've gone ahead and did, or done, is labeled each point for us so we can see what the X and Y values are. So 0, 0,500, 300, 400, 380, about 180. Again, you have to use your best eye there, I guess, if you will. And then 400, 0. So what we're going to do is take each of those points and plug it into that profit equation and see which one gives us the biggest profit because that's what the question asks. What can we do to make sure we maximize our profit? So we're going to have to plug in four points. So over here on the side, that's what we are going to do. We're going to take those four points and plug them in. So like the first one would be 60 times 0, 60x plus 50y, the y is 500, equals your profit. So plug that into the calculator, 60 times 0 is 0, 50 times 500 gives us $25,000. So we're going to do that three more times and just see which one gives us the highest profit. So I'm going to do that now. You guys could do it too. And then just check back if you want to pause it. But I'm going to do that right now. Plug in those last three points into that profit equation and see what each one gives us. So I've gone ahead. If you guys did too, check to see what you guys got. Plug them in. 
And when I did, I got four profits, 25,000, which we did together. When I plugged in 300, 400, got 38,000. Then I plugged in 380, 180, got 31,800. Then I. So I've now plugged in all the points and found the profit for all the border points that we were talking about over here. So when you look at this, you guys can see the one we did together, we got $25,000. So when I plugged in the second point of 300, 400, I got a profit of 38,000. The point 380, 180 gave me a profit of 31,800. And that last point on the x-axis, which really, if you guys think about it, the intercept points really aren't going to give you the most profit because that's saying that one of your plants isn't making any bikes at all because one of the point values is zero. But that last point gave us 24,000. So based off of our profit, the maximum profit we're going to make is from this equation here. So as your answer, I'm just going to write that we're going to get the maximum profit when plant A manufactures 300 bikes and plant B makes or manufactures. 400 bytes. Profit would be So hopefully when you guys do it, it might go a little quicker since I was talking you through everything. But really, you start with coming up with your inequalities. You graph them like you guys have done in the past. And then you're just testing those border points of just the area that's a solution for all three inequalities that you graphed. And see which one whoops, gives you the best profit when you plug them into your profit equation.